In this session, we want to talk about determination of creatinine. Creatinine being the major waste product which is excreted in the urine. And in the, in the introduction, we saw that uh, this creatinine is, is a non-renal threshold, non threshold substance. Meaning, whenever it is filtered as 10, it is found in the urine as 10. It is neither reabsorbed nor secreted. This is the creatinine, which is endogenous. So it is an endogenous substance we normally use even to determine GFR, or what we call glomerular filtration rate. Then the, the one which we use exogenous is inurine. But in our body, we have creatinine. This creatinine, it is not reabsorbed. So whenever we use, we filter it as the way it is, is the way we excrete it in the urine. So it is non-renal threshold substances. Neither secreted nor reabsorbed via the renal tubules. And this creatinine is formed whereby if we have arginine, this arginine, we add, we add glycine, and this glycine, it converts arginine to only fat. This is the first process during formation of creatinine. And this creatinine is formed in the muscles, majorly skeletal muscles. So we find the creatinine being released in the myocytes. So we shall see that even the body muscle mass affects the creatinine levels. And we shall find men being having bigger muscle mass than the ladies men have higher creatinine levels than ladies and children. So in the kidney, so we see glycine, when it is added to arginine to form ornithine, arginine is converted to guanidoacetate. And this guanidoacetate is transported in the blood and taken to the liver. And within the liver, this guanidoacetate is converted to creatine in the presence of some, whereby some is, is converted to SAP. SC adenosine methionine being converted to S adenosine hemocystine. And during that conversion, we see it converting guanidoacetate to creatinine. This one we are calling it S adenosine adenosyl methionine. That is what we are calling SAM. So guanidoacetate in the presence of S adenosyl methionine, it is converted to S adenosyl hemocysteine in the liver and it is converted to creatine, which is the first product or the precursor we can use in biosynthesis of creatine. That whenever we form creatine, in the liver cell hepatocytes. This creatine in the liver hepatocytes, we have their mitochondria. And this mitochondria is going to donate ATP. So we shall see that we can phosphorylate, whereby ATP in the mitochondria of the liver hepatocytes is hydrolyzed to ADP plus phosphate inorganic, hence adding a phosphate group on creatine to form creatine phosphate. So what donates the phosphate group on creatine is ATP. And, who, and this reaction of hydrolysis of ATP occurs in the presence of an enzyme known as creatine kinase. So creatine kinase enzyme, which is abbreviated as CK. Some books call it CPK. You can call it creatine kinase, or you can call it creatine phosphokinase. It is the one that catalyzes the phosphorylation of creatine to form creatine phosphate in the liver cells. So this reaction is also occurring in the liver. And this, after forming creatine phosphate, we are going to see that this creatine phosphate formed undergoes non-enzymatic reaction. So non-enzymatic. This is non-enzymatic, whereby it is converted to creatine with loss of a phosphate inorganic. 
So we remove this phosphate and then this creatine is converted to creatine. And this creatine is the one that is stored in the muscles. You find it in the muscle. So this is basically the formation of creatine, whereby arginine, in the presence of glycine, is converted to guanido acetate, and guanido acetate is converted to creatine in the presence of SC adenosyl methionine. And after forming creatine in the liver cells, it is phosphorylated by creatine kinase, adding a phosphate group from ATP to form creatine phosphate. And this creatine phosphate undergoes non enzymatic reaction where we cleave off the phosphate in organic and we are able to form a creatine. And this creatine is the one that is stored in the muscles. So this is how we form a creatine in the, our body. But after forming creatine in our body, this creatine, I've told you, that it is neither reabsorbed, it is filtered in the kidney, it is part of the non-protein nitrogenous compound, and it is neither filtered, nor reabsorbed. Reabsorbed in the kidney. So it is not, even if it is a good marker, it is the best marker for determination of GFR. So we can use it to determine glomerular filtration rate using creatinine levels because of it is important. And it is a non-protein non nitrogen compound found in the muscles. We find it in the muscles. That is creatinine which we have formed. And this creatinine is determined in the lab Majorly by, we, we determine it, and this method we call it Jaffe Floats method. We use Jaffe Floats method to determine, and this Jaffe Floats method is a kinetic method. That this Jaffe Floats, it uses reagent picric, it uses picric acid, and this picric acid contain picrate ions, contain picrate ions. So when you add serum, when you add a sample containing creatinine, this creatinine in the serum sample or in the urine sample reacts with the picrate ions in the picric acid. And this reaction occurs in alkaline media, it occurs in alkaline media to form a red colored complex. To form a red colored complex. So we are seeing the principle of determination. This is the principle of determination of creatinine in blood by Jaffe slots, whereby the sample preferred. We prefer serum corrected from the red top, or we prefer heparanized plasma. So when we have plasma and we add the picric acid containing picrate ions, the picrate ions react with the creatinine in alkaline media, always we like pH greater than 12. At the pH greater than 12, we are able to form a red colored complex. And this red colored complex formed during this determination is going to, determine, to be determined spectral photometrically. Determine this spectral photometrically at the 490 nanometer wavelength. And this, when we determine it at this wavelength, the intensity of the red color being formed the intensity of the red color formed is directly proportional. Directly proportional, proportional to the amount of creatinine in the sample. It is directly proportional to the amount of creatinine in the sample. So we are seeing 
after picrate iron is reacting with the creatinine in alkaline media to form a red colored complex this colored complex in the laboratory we are determining it using a spectrophotometer set at 590 wavelength we use 590 wave and this one we continue we monitor it continuously whereby we shall determine the rate of change is that if i obtain a sample like a1 and another sample i call it a2 that i can get to get the change in absorbance i get a2 minus a1 that's why i'm calling it kinetic method this is the jaffes one and the method or the procedure of this test the procedure is always per manufacturer's mind. Every manufacturer tells you how many of the sample to pipette and how many of the reagent to add. So whenever you determine creatinine in the lab using the machine or after purchasing the reagents, always read the manufacturer's instructions to tell you how many to pipette, how long to intubate and at what time to read and at what intervals. So this is the procedure you always read. So our major role was to, be, to understand the principle of determination by Jaffe slots method. And another test we can do, we shall look at, and this one we shall look at in the next video. In the next video we shall look at how we can use this creatine in which we have formed to determine the GFR or what you call glomerular filtration rate. So in the next video, we are going to look at the determination of glomerular filtration rate using creatinine. So don't miss it. Thank you so much. Always remember to subscribe, like the video, and share your comments. Thank you so much.